All right. So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, the base strength. Okay. Or oh, the factors that makes uh, a base stronger. Okay. The factors that, or the features that, that stabilizes, uh, the stabilize the base. Okay. Also makes the, um, the also make the base weaker. Okay. Most stable something is less likely for it to react. Okay. So let's write this down because that's basically the heart of it. Uh, more stable the base uh, base less reactive or weaker weaker it is. Okay, so that's gonna be the uh, be the uh, the bottom line when it comes to the base strength. Okay, um, so the three features we talked about uh, talked about when it comes to determining the stability of the conjugate base still applies here. Um, okay, now let's talk about them one by one. Let's start with feature one. Okay. So feature one is about the charge bearing atom. So there's no, sometimes in the bases, we do not have the negative charge, okay? We have a lone pair instead, okay? So we can write that uh, charge or lone pair, lone pair bearing atom. The nature of the charge or lone pair bearing atom. Okay, that's gonna be feature one. Okay, and what do I mean by this is, say that we have two bases, okay? So we have oxygen, okay? The lone pairs, and then versus we have nitrogen with lone pairs, okay? Now, Oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. As a result of that, oxygen is going to hold on to the lone pairs strongly, okay? More, more strongly compared to the nitrogen, okay? Therefore, as a result of that, our oxygen uh, or OH, what is on the left is less reactive as a base compared to, uh, compared to uh, the nitrogen lone pair. Therefore, the stronger base uh, between these two should be our amine over here, okay? Because more electronegative oxygen is less likely to to use those electrons or to or to share those electrons uh, with some something else, okay? Because it is stable that is as it is. Therefore, um, it's, it's going to try to hold on to those electrons compared to nitrogen. Therefore, nitrogen. It's going to be more reactive as a base compared to uh, this oxygen species. Okay, so that's how the electronegativity plays a role here. Let's do another one very quickly. Um, let's do feature two. Feature two is about uh, resonance stabilization. Resonance stabilization. Okay. So again, let's think about two situations. Well, let's talk about an amine. Okay. So this one amine, like this. Okay. This is another amine. With a double bond next to uh, the lone pair. Okay, so when you have a double bond next to the lone pair, what is going to happen is this lone pair is crucial for amine to act as a base. Okay, the lone pair is crucial to accept uh, a proton from water. 
Okay, that's what makes it a base. But the thing is, because of the, the, the double bond, one bond away from this lone pair, you can have this lone pair uh, participate, participating in resonance. Okay, if this happens, I mean, I can, I can quickly draw. You can have the negative charge like this. So you have double bond over here and the negative charge over here. Oh, no, no negative charge. Uh, the lone pair over there, right? Let me, let me use that. So let's call this a lone pair. Now, lone pair here. Okay, and then again, this these can go back and forth. Um, yeah, actually, if you think about it, you can, so we haven't talked about the formal charges yet. It's gonna have uh, um, a negatively charged carbon over here, and then the positively charged uh, nitrogen over here, if this happens. Okay, um, but anyway, so the most important thing is to, uh, to understand this lone pair is not gonna be available as available because of the participation in uh, charge delocalization. And as a result of that, uh, we can imagine that this molecule over here without the resonance is gonna be more reactive as a base, okay? Because this lone pair is more available to accept a proton than the other, uh, than, than the right-hand side molecule, therefore it's gonna be uh, more basic. Okay. Now, um, when it comes to feature three, feature three is about the neighbors. Oh, the inductive effect. Okay. So here's the idea. Let's have an example one more time. Let's go with the amine again. Uh, here are the two amines. So here's one of the amines. And the other amine, you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna have uh, nitrogen, okay but you're gonna have more electron donating groups bound to it. So let's say that uh, we have, you know what, let's have it here, okay? You have another um, CS3, which is the electron donating group attached to it, okay? And now because the CS3 groups are electron donating, it's gonna push the electron cloud towards this nitrogen. Let me use a different color to indicate that. The CS3 groups, so what we have here is a CS3 group. Okay, so here, instead of one, I'm gonna, we're gonna have two electron right neighbors. They push electrons, okay, towards, uh, towards this nitrogen center. So it's gonna increase the electron density around this nitrogen. And as a result of that, it's, the nitrogen is gonna become less stable, okay? And it's going to be more reactive as a base because when you have a high electron density, more likely for it to use that electron density to grab a proton and act as an acid. Okay, as a result of that, between these two guys, um, these two molecules, this one will be more uh, uh, more basic. Okay, apart from that, there's only one other thing I want to mention. Um, when it comes to base stability, I mean, I'm sorry, the base uh, reactivity, um, we can talk about primary amine, secondary amine, and tertiary amines. It turns out that the strongest bases are uh, secondary amines, okay? So here's what I mean. So when it comes to, uh, Let's see. Okay, so we have R, N is two. 
that is primary. We have two R groups bound to it in an NH, and then we have three R groups bound to this nitrogen. Okay, so in these three cases, okay, R groups are usually considered as electron donating groups. Now, for more R groups, you have greater the electron density on uh, greater the electron density on this nitrogen, so more basic it must be. However, the tertiary amines happens to be less reactive as bases. Okay, so if I if I draw a tertiary amine, for example, something like uh, something like this. So you have three CS3 groups bound. Okay, an example of a tertiary amine. Now, this tertiary amine happens to be uh, less basic than in, in some cases, even less than the primary amines uh, bec because it, it, even though you have the inductive effect pushing the electron cloud towards that nitrogen, okay, uh, the, the steric hindrance presented by the CS3 group around it is going to act as a barrier for it to react with um, react with uh, proton donors, okay? So the steric, due to steric hindrance, let's write that down, okay? Due to steric, let me write that again, due to steric, hindrance, okay, tertiary amines, tertiary amines are less basic or less reactive, okay, just to make sure everybody's on the same page, uh, this is a primary amine, this is a secondary amine, this is the tertiary amine, okay? So primary, secondary, tertiary, okay? Tertiary amines are less basic because uh, of the static hindrance, okay? So as a result of that, the most basic would be the secondary amine, okay? This is gonna be uh, the the most basic um, amine compared to the three types of uh, possible amines. Okay, so uh, this summarizes the factors affecting the base strength. Okay, again, the feature one is more important than feature two, feature two is more important than feature three, and so forth. So, the same thing applies here. So, um, yeah, I hope this helped. I'll see you guys later in class. Bye, everybody.